Well, how do you think I feel about what's been going on? Let's talk about G-O-D, you for a minute. Well, how do you think I feel about what's gone wrong? What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Awesome Nobody, and I'm here with another episode of the Awesome Nobody Podcast. I got a real special treat for you culture fiends out there today. A real cool cat on the show. He hails from Harrisburg, if I'm correct, but you can catch him dipping on those L.A. streets in the blacked out Audi, you know? Uh, A true mover and shaker, always on the scene where you need to be, and I'm sure where you want to be at. Um, So I got Reef on the phone. What's good, Reef? Hold on, man. So thanks for being on the show. Thanks for making the time. I seen you busy as hell. You moving, you flying private. You on the East Coast, <laughs> West Coast, riding in the slingshot. Man, how do you do it? Man, uh, I'm doing great, as you can see. Uh, <laughs> I have no complaints at the moment. <laughs> but, I mean, at the end of the day, just humble. Just, just happy to be where I'm at right now. That's right, man. Blessings. Hey, you know, you put that good energy out there and you get that back. I be trying to tell these people, man. I be trying to tell 100%. them. Yeah, man, that's a blessing, man. And also, hard work pays off, you know? Like, a lot of people think well, that it just wakes up and this happens, but it doesn't happen like that. Nah, not at all. You're going to have your ups and downs, a lot of struggle, but once you uh, once you get it, it's there. It's going to stay as long as you keep that same energy. That's true, man. So, so for those who don't know, just sort of let the listeners know a little bit about you. So, who are you, Reef? Uh, who am I, man? That's a hard question to that ask. That is a hard Everybody, question. Like, <laughs> it's deep. I might ask you that because I, I really don't like to talk about myself. But uh, just to keep it simple, uh, I hail from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Um, went to school at University in Pennsylvania, the uh, first HBCU. Mm, nice. Uh, studied, studied mass communications out there. I was with a little focus of PR and uh, and uh, entertainment pretty much out there. But my whole life switched up when I left college. But uh, yeah, man, just now I live in L.A., just chasing a dream. That's what's up, man. And, you know, um, I'm from New Jersey, uh, East Coast. Similar, I went to HBCU, too. I went to, I went to Clark Atlanta and Atlanta. Yeah. And, uh, you know, stayed on the East Coast, was trying to get away from the East Coast, but the East Coast had me trapped, man. I swear. Uh, my why, why, why you think you're trapped? Well, when I got my first job, was, it was in Pennsylvania, right? And then I switched companies, and my next job was in Pennsylvania. And then I ended up starting my own business, and it was back in Jersey. And I'm like, damn, I'm just destined to be over here. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know? So I mean, sometimes it's best, though. A lot of people don't need to move, though. If, if that's where it's working for you, then just don't force it. Oh, yeah, so. that's true. That's true. Uh, you definitely can't force the hand. So what it, in, in that, so what made you move to the West Coast? Well, uh, kind of long story short, <laughs> uh, what happened when I was in school, I used to do, like, a lot of um, – well, just to start from the beginning, I started a website at school, the produce section.com. Okay. Uh, and it was basically, uh, it was an entertainment platform for unsigned and independent artists to get their, okay. uh, to get their audience built up. Uh, because we had a lot of people at our school that were great artists, but they just wasn't, they didn't have that target. They didn't have the audience. They just had the, the school. Yeah. Everybody was listening to them either from Philly, New Jersey, New York, but they didn't have like a broader range. Yeah. So decided to start a website and give them that platform. And just the gaining traction off of that. So mm. what happened was a lot of administration. They saw what I was doing. I started doing a lot of uh, video editing stuff for the campus, and it pretty much just built my name up for wow. the type of quality of work that I was putting out there. Um, so then from there, um, a lot of recruiters for different uh, networks and 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 um, companies actually came to the school and administration. They were pretty much um, just recommending me for their companies. Wow, that's what's uh, up. So, yeah, it's it's it, again like like you said, if you put out that energy and you do good work, then it comes back on you. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, one guy actually came out to Lincoln, uh, and he used to well, he worked for DreamWorks, uh, and DreamWorks, like like I said, my whole life switched up. I, I went from like so many different uh, career avenues to what I'm doing now. But um, what happened was he used to work for DreamWorks, and he recruited me. He was like, whenever you're ready, I got a job for you. Just move out to LA. So the moment I graduated, I'm like, I'm packing my bag. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to L.A. because, I mean, I'm from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. It's a really, really small town. Yeah. Um, and there's not much opportunity out there. So I was like, I have to leave to get that opportunity. 
Um, so then moved to LA, got my first job with DreamWorks, and it was cool for a moment. And then I hit that 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 bad patch where yeah. you just you feel that struggle. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I guess we can get into that later. But yeah, that's that's the only reason I came to LA is because I had a job offer. So. Hey, that's beautiful, man. That's good to hear, you know, because a lot of people feel like they don't need college to do what they want to do. But I I like to hear that, you know, you went to college and you sort of made your own experience to what you were passionate about. And I think that's super dope, man. Yeah, 100 percent. Like, I I mean, I kind of agree that some people, they actually don't need college. College really helped me with the networking aspect, not really the the. not really with like learning and school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when like a lot of stuff you can learn by yourself when you're in school, mm-hmm. but just to to know that you're going to school with so many different people from different avenues of life and everything that helped out the most for me. Yeah. Um. And again, just lifelong friends that you you gain in college and just lifelong networks that you build. That was the best part about college for me. But I really feel like if I didn't go to college, I could have still been doing what I'm doing now, just off of like, yeah, just doing what you want to do and putting your mind to it and really learning the process and everything you need to know about your field yeah that's true i mean i definitely agree with the network um i can go anywhere in any state and i guarantee i can call probably three or four people that i know really yep. well that i went to college with and that's a blessing yeah, that's exactly how it is yeah yeah, yeah definitely and and I was going to ask about the network and you kind of answered that. So that's dope just to have that network, because even now I'm starting to see a lot of that on the East Coast. Like a lot. There's a lot of like Clark Atlanta has a lot of um, like alumni associations in New York. They got D.C. Yeah. So I'm seeing them do more things. They just had a um, a spring coming. It's this thing called spring coming. And it's basically like homecoming, but it's in New York. Uh, so it's, it's actually dope the way they're doing it. So that's that's dope to hear, man. That's really yeah, dope. Yeah, that's actually dope because they don't have to go back to the campus. They can just link up in New York. That's actually a great idea. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Really <laughs> yeah, so um, Pennsylvania, man. So I, I actually got a lot of love for Pennsylvania. Um, when I lived in Pennsylvania, I lived in the, like the Allentown area. And then yeah. I moved again to Pittsburgh. So I was in Pittsburgh pretty heavy for a couple of years. And I remember driving through, you know, the PA Turnpike through Harrisburg. <laughs> and, and you're right. There's not there's not much. I actually much. stopped in York and I was yeah, getting some okay. food. And there was like this right next to where I was getting the food at. There was like this popping ass club in York. I don't know if you know. Where that I, I know what you're talking about, but I don't know the name because there's only like three clubs in the area, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yo, I was shocked as hell. That shit was like jumping. Like it was yeah. mad people outside. Um, the shit. Is, I went inside for a quick second, uh, but then I left. But that's crazy. So um, the website. So the website popped off. I, I saw that. The, so it's called the produce section. It's at yeah, the right. section, T-H-A section on I-G. Uh, and um, so do you still work with artists today? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like, I mean, that's that's on a daily basis. Like, outside of what I actually do for work, yeah. Uh, this this website is like that's my my main, uh, just my main hobby, I guess you could say. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's something I can never let go. I mean, it's been going for like eight years now, so that's something I just can't give up. It's it's it's, it's really embedded in me now. <laughs> wow, that's what's up. Eight years. That's dope. That's commitment yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. So, um, so if, like, so let's say an artist want to get in contact with you and like, so what sort of do you, can you provide or what sort of, how does the website work, uh, with the art, the upcoming artists? Um, so what happens is, uh, we have a contact page on the, on the actual uh, website itself. Um, on there, it's just a lot of, um, it's the breakdown of the requirements if you want to submit music. Um, so you'll have what we require is a high quality MP3. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to have, uh, an artwork for the for the actual song itself for the single or the album or ep mixtape etc um on top of that at least an epk or just a brief description of the artist itself so we can get an understanding of where the artist is from uh their background their inspirations and uh outside of that just a hot song because okay. it's not hot then we try not to be biased uh yeah. because like everybody everybody that actually listens to the submissions they have a different um a different taste level when mm-hmm. it comes to music um, so that's why we have such a broad range of music that's on the website. But um, we we know quality when we hear it. So uh, you submit your music, somebody on the team listens to it, and um, if uh, they like it, they'll reach out and we'll get it posted for you. So damn, that's, that's what's up. It. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I think that what you just said is really important because um, I went to Complex Con in LA last year. I was out there, and I sat in on um, Everyday Struggle. Joe Buttons wasn't oh, yeah, there. I was there. Oh, you was there? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so Joe Buzz wasn't there. It was just Nadeska and academics. And but Clark Kent was the guest, and he was. They were talking about music. You know, it was a big topic at the time. And Clark Kent said that there's no more A and R, right? So just everything's coming through the gates, right? All this type of music, yeah. and even now the music has always been like this. It's just that the A and Rs weren't letting it in. And when you yeah, just exactly. said there, like you listen to it, you guys have an ear for this. You get what I'm saying? Like that's so important, you know. And um, I was going to ask you, you know, how do you feel about music today? Ah uh, man, uh, that's that's a tough thing. Man. <laughs> I actually did some uh, I did some work with Atlantic before. I did uh, some talent scouting and A and R with them as well. So that just tied in with the website that I got. That's what's um, up. And the process is pretty much the same. Like like you said, there's really not an A and R. Everybody's A and R. Put it put it this way. Everybody's an A and R. There's so much music coming out, but there's so much music coming out that not all of it's quality. Yeah. Um, and that's the one thing people just push it out because they feel like the more music that they're pushing out the more consistent they'll be and people will actually listen to it. But in the back of everybody that's listening to it, their mind, they're like, oh, this is just a throwaway. I can listen to it now, but I won't like it maybe next week because something news out. It's just like there's so much music coming out. It's kind of annoying at the same time. You just you, you never get the time to really listen to it and break it down and really bask in the music itself and get that feeling from it. But um, it's just, just because of the type of music, like the genres that's out with the mumble rap and all that, it's just a lot going on. Mm-hmm. I honestly don't know how I feel about it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a tough call. So I, I do music myself. Uh, I rap. Uh, we get a little bit into production. Um, but mm -hmm. like even with when I started doing music, there wasn't any Takashi Six Nine around. It was more so, yeah. it you know m the music I made basically became dated once they came out. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I like yeah. saw that, and it like made me take a step back, and I had to really think like how to put stuff out now because they're not nobody's listening for that now you get what i'm saying so it's really tough for an artist but you know when you do music you do it because you care you you love it you know and you have a passion for it uh but you still put it out but yeah it is very difficult when you know you're you're writing or you're even flowing to a cadence and you just got somebody coming out there like yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh. Like, oh shit, yeah. he just killed me with a grunt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I mean, I, I feel like when it comes to music and the artist itself, as long as you're music that you like, you're mm -hmm. gonna have that target audience that's gonna resonate with that music and they're gonna feel you. So, I, I mean, you just gotta stay true to yourself when it comes to music because there's somebody out there that likes your music. It just comes to how you're promoting it because a lot of people they just put out music but they don't mm -hmm. promote it and they feel like they're gonna blow up. Mm -hmm. Just not their music, but if it doesn't come across those ears, then it's not going to happen. Yeah, so. I I um I always tell people um you're just not consistent enough with your music, right? Like it'll pop in, pop out, pop in, pop out. You gotta you gotta stay with your foot on their neck, so to speak. You know, yeah. Apply pressure till it breaks. You know, if you really want to get it out there, keep uh, creating it. I mean, everything's accessible now. Like you've got Everything. websites like. Like you said, the the produce section, you got SoundCloud, you got um, Audio Mac, you got everything direct to consumer. This is actually the best time to start making music. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. As soon as you get on the playlist, if you get on a popping playlist and they don't know who you are, but they hear it, it's mixed in with their favorite artist. They're like, oh, I like this guy now. Mm -hmm. There it is. Let me find out more about it. Let me let me go to his page and see what he has. Mm -hmm. like, there's so many different avenues of streaming services that are free just to get your music out there. It's just gotta just gotta make a good quality music that somebody's gonna like yeah that's it that's true so talking about the music who's in your playlist right now man my playlist uh, it's kind of it's a broad range i mean i like this r&b and rap at the moment but i mean it's a lot of newcomers that's out right now like aaron ray and r&b uh a boogie when it comes to, to hip-hop and well he has a kind of mix he's like a mix between r&b and hip-hop he's like the mary day for guys uh you got <laughs> You got Ty Dolla Sign, uh, Marty McLaren. He's actually an artist from Harrisburg that lives in L.A. now. He's great. He does all his production, um, writing, everything. Like he's an all-around artist. And I love people that actually do production themselves mm -hmm. because they actually, they just build in. They stick around their music a lot longer. They put a lot more effort into it. And that's just that's just so dope to me. Yeah, um, I agree. Travis Scott. Travis Scott's another one of my favorite artists. The Bella. God. That's the and God right there. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot. It's, it's a whole list. Yeah, I'm, um, never know what's gonna come on. That is true. It's you know, there's there like we were saying, there's so many people coming out. Um, right now, 
um i was just in philly and i was at the um st john concert and uh he had the he had the live show uh definitely been, I forgot to mention him. <laughs> yeah yeah st john definitely surprised me a lot you know uh definitely gave me a breath breath of fresh air to some of the other yeah. mumble rappers um but it was dope concert you know really really dope i got a chance to meet him by accident and shit yeah. uh was walking to the elevator and he was walking out into the crowd and shit and got a chance to talk with him for a quick second he's tall as shit i didn't realize he was that damn tall <laughs> like i'm not tall at yeah, all but I only, I only saw like one picture of him and that was on his album or like i haven't actually seen a picture of him in public or anything so that, i wouldn't even know i that, wouldn't even expect it that nigga might be six seven <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo. Uh and then from at his concert, one of his openers was uh Tyler Yahweh. Yeah. Then I didn't I didn't know shit about him, uh, but definitely feeling the uh Gemini record. And uh I f- started following him and apparently the, he just put this shit out last week and he's already on uh top fifty viral songs on, on Spotify. So it can uh, it can yeah, it can happen quick. I'm also fucking with uh G O D. Is he's he spells it G I O D E E. Uh I like him. He's kinda inconsistent, but I like him and then uh this I never heard of him. Yeah, he's 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 dope. He's super underground. He might have less than five thousand yeah. followers, but uh I just found him one day on Spotify. Uh definitely had a couple good songs. He got this song called um Buzz Lightyear that I was feeling really hard. Crazy name, but uh, definitely dope song, and then this other dude what named Norman Perry. I was I was feeling Norman Perry a lot. Same thing, oh, like yeah, Norman Perry too. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. so Norman Perry's, Perry's a little bit bigger than that, but I definitely realized yeah. he should be bigger. I'm like Norman Perry should be skyrocketing right now. He's fucking dope. Yeah, he's. I feel like he's been out for a while, but he's really starting to get that traction now. I, I don't know what single it was, but there's something that, that really helped him pick up. Yeah, but yeah, I definitely know what you're talking about. And and that kind of leads to my next question. Do you think that there's a a problem with artists today and work ethic, like? Are they are they mm. like searching for that viral hit, and so they are they not putting a lot of music out to try to push a viral song? Do you feel like that's that's a great question? I guess it depends on the artist because a lot of people they feel like their music isn't what people listen to on a daily basis, then they're gonna go for that that main single that's gonna go viral first, and that's where like they're dumbing down themselves and they, they're not creating what's true to them. So I feel like it's still not even gonna pick up because like even the situation with um with Black Six Black yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. He was like he was he was signed to a label and tried to get him to go a whole different route of the type of music that he makes. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't picking up. So once he started getting on track with what what was true to him, that's when he he caught that fame and he he's one of the greatest artists out right now to me too. So yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, man. I just music is really a hard subject to really dive into when it comes to like the work ethic because everybody's different. You're mm-hmm. not always around the artist itself when they're, when they're when they're cooking up in the studio. And you're not really seeing how they're working, but yeah, man, like that's that, that's that's tough. That's tough. Yeah, I, how, I, how you feel about it? I, I kind of feel um, that they are kind of changing the way. It's because it's subliminal, you know. Like, and it's also frustrating. Like I said, when you see, you know, somebody put out one record and, you know, all of a sudden they're on SNL and they're on all these shows and you're like, damn, I've been working hard. So they, I feel yeah. like that makes you automatically change your direction. And what mm-hmm. you see is somebody trying to hit with one song compared to just doing their own thing. Um, I yeah. mean, the closest I've seen to somebody just doing their own thing was, and I, I hate to keep using him as an example, was St. John. He just put the whole collection out. I don't even think he put out a single. He was like, take the collection and i'm just gonna rock and that's kind of what yeah. you got to do if you're talented and because the, the talent's gonna speak for itself and then the yeah, work I'm ethic sure. you put behind your project because he don't really got no marketing you know uh besides a couple mentions on a couple podcasts i heard about him on yeah, the, he, yeah. He signed anybody yeah i heard he got a a, a deal through um uh i, th- I believe it's ellie reed Okay. Yeah, so Ellie Reed is funneling some money behind him and I saw on his Instagram he's got the same manager as um um what's the white guy? Um Post Malone. G Easy? Oh Post Malone. Post okay. Malone. So he'd be on the Post Malone tours, yeah. So but Oh yeah, so that's definitely helping out right now. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely helping out right now. But um yeah, so I, I definitely think that they change and they cause like the dude G O D I started following him and I'm like, yo, he ain't put out nothing. And yeah. I just see him keep pushing that one song. I'm like, that's not it, bro. You, you got, I know you got a whole bunch more. And I just think he's thinking too much about kind of how Cardi was. Remember how Cardi was didn't want to put her album out because she was overthinking it. 
I mean, that's, that's partly on the label because once they see like the hit is going, they're gonna try to get all that streaming money and yeah. letting it build up. Because I mean, the more that it streams, the more traction you're gonna get. So when you do put out that project, but sometimes you wait too long and people are like, "What is this?" Mm -hmm. Expected the last single you put out, but lucky for Cardi, she has a great team behind her. She has great writers. Yeah. That album was amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, she put out the amazing. heat. She put out the heat. Yeah, yeah. I was listening I mean, it's to that. The other it's day. not something I would listen to all the time because it's not built for me. But that's, yeah. that's definitely a dope, a dope project. Mm -hmm. So, so here's another question uh, with the streaming service because that was crazy. Like just streaming to really basically get Apple downloads the fuck out of here uh <laughs> do you fuck with spotify or title uh i'm more of a title guy I don't, I don't like the way spotify is like set up for me i don't know like title is just a lot more easier for me um and, and just the, the opportunities that they have like with the videos and just the exclusive content spotify I'm, i never was a user of spotify like that so yeah definitely title for definitely me. title yeah you know um I was going to the Made in America festivals. You know, they give out the free. They were giving out six months free at the time. So oh, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yo, I'm fucking with title, you know, Rock yeah. Nation. And, uh, you know, yeah. definitely, definitely vibe with it. But, you know, at first, you know, this is going back almost two years. And I know that they were slow to get the ball rolling. You know, um, yeah. they had the Jake cat catalogs up there, you know, and they had the first Yay catalog, which was big. Um and, but now I'm seeing they got, you know, so much more content, like the playlist on point. They brought Elliot Wilson on. They they just um, dropped um, the Streets is Watching video on there. Like, I'm like, oh, that's taking me way back. Oh, I, did? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't beat that. <laughs> yeah, the full, like, you know, music movie thing that Hove did back in 97. Uh, yeah. They just put that up there, like, Streets is Talking, Streets is Watching. I'm like, this shit is lit. So, yeah, title definitely won, I think, or is winning. Uh, the stream awards um spotify is crumbling you know you two, yeah two uh two mubasa just left so two mubasa was the um he was the one who created rap caviar okay and he he went to he actually went to um youtube music so he's over uh, there at youtube oh, yeah, now. yeah they did just drop that um I know they got a new platform now, the YouTube, the YouTube music thing. So, yeah, and that's probably a big move. Big move for him, man. <laughs> so he he's taking everybody with him because, you know, if you, um, I hear Jim Jones and Dipset. He was responsible for the whole Dipset reunion. He was responsible for like a lot of the stuff over there when it came to like just making Spotify big. And I think that he's gonna probably do the same with YouTube Red because even for me, like when I put out my songs and like do TuneCore and all that shit, and when I look at like my yeah. residuals, YouTube really be the only one that be giving me my little point zero zero one cent per song. Yeah. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you gotta think there's so much music uploaded to YouTube. Like it's always been a platform for music before they saw that. Like mm -hmm. everybody used to upload albums on there when it, when it came down to downloading and, mm -hmm. and illegal piracy and oh, all yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now that they have the platform and the game plan, they can really take over. Mm -hmm. They have a huge viewer uh, viewer base. Yeah, that's true. That is true. So um, let's let's change up a little bit. So we talked a little bit about college. And what college did you say you went to again? Lincoln University. Lincoln. Okay, Lincoln. Yeah, I definitely yeah. know Lincoln. So what advice would you have for someone getting ready to graduate and start their career? Wow, getting ready to graduate. Uh, well, Prior to graduating, I would say definitely get an internship. Mm -hmm. Internships are huge. I I mean, that's something I actually did not do in college, so I felt like I had a, a slower start than everybody else, kind of. But um, yeah, definitely internships because, like, with that, you get, you get your foot in the door, you get that experience that you actually need. Because you know, nowadays when you go out for a position, they're like, uh, "What experience do you have?" And that's when that's when the internship comes into play. So definitely internships, um, just. You got to go to all the networking events. You just got to really talk to people, reach out as much as you can, because if you're not reaching out, then you're not going to get a yes or a no answer. You know what I mean? You're just going to be stuck stagnant. Mm -hmm. um, it's, 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 it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's that's definitely a good place to start, man. Uh, internships um, definitely will help. And it will help you find out if you like what you're about to do, too, because a lot of exactly. people, man, got, you know, crazy majors and but in the real world that should be boring as fuck <laughs> yeah so, I, that, I mean some of my friends are in the same position they went to school for like engineering and everything and then they're like this is not what i want to do right now like why why did i do this but i, I mean a lot of people are going to go to school and they're still not going to know what they wanted to do like mm -hmm. when, they, when they start taking their classes that's what happened to me i started off as a health science major because mm -hmm. I, I used to be an athlete i wanted to 
talk about people with injuries and stuff. And mm-hmm. then I'm like, ah, this is really not for me. Let me go to what my real passion was. And as a child, I used to make mixtapes for people, just always had that new music that people were listening to. I'm like, and let me let me start getting the entertainment and all that. So that's the reason why I switched over. You really just got to pay attention to the signs and actually listen to other people sometimes because they might know what's best for you if you actually – if they're if they're close enough to you and they actually know you personally, then they can definitely help you out and find out what your real passion is. That is really true. That is really true. Some of the best advice I got was uh, from other people saying what they thought I would be good at uh, in the school mm-hmm. setting. You know, in the people who are trained not 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 your homeboy, but the people who are trained yeah. to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Even that, like some of the people that don't even know you, they can just tell like what your yeah. passion is by looking at you and seeing how you move. So. Sometimes you got to listen to the strangers, too. <laughs> That's true. That is true, man. So um, every time I, so I see you on the gram, I'll definitely follow you. You stay in the fashion, right? So what are some of your favorite fashion items? Wow, some of my favorite fashion items. Uh, I know the Jordan 1s. I mean, yeah, it has to be a sneaker. <laughs> so definitely I have a whole bunch of Jordan 1s. That's my favorite uh, actual shoe right now. Um I have like a large collection, but when it comes to everyday wear, it's gonna be a Jordan one because mm. it just it's so versatile. You can look sporty with it, you can look casual. Um, that's definitely one of my favorite favorite shoes. Um, outside of well, when it comes to fashion, uh, it's usually like something like an accessory. So I either always have to have a watch on or just something on my wrist. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I just feel like I feel useless without something on my wrist for some reason. <laughs> so definitely like a watch. Um, but yeah, those are like the main two things. I try to keep it simple, honestly. Like yeah, jeans, t-shirt, or a hoodie, and just that's it. <laughs> yeah, I was um I was trying to get the um the OG uh ones, the green ones. I guess the light green. Yeah. I really like them, man. I kind of hesitated on my purchase. I should have just jumped I up when I seen them. Yeah, yeah. Got <laughs> there was two. There's two Jordans that I had p- plenty of access to get. It was the yeah. um. It was the 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 now I can't remember the name of them. They were like the the metallic looking ones for the All Star game, the All Star ones. Okay. Uh, yeah. And All Star sixes. Oh, I, yo, them they were not selling at all. And I'm like, damn, nobody buying these. And I didn't even think like they were they were for me. I should have just scooped them up. Yeah, and that's, I, that's <laughs> the best time when you know that people are not buying them. That's when you need to get them because once yeah. they're actually gone, they're and people gone. are like. And where, where'd you get them at? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, they came out a long time ago. I just, yeah, I was sleeping. I was sleeping <laughs> them. They, they was hard all as the, hell. All it takes is one person to wear it and somebody else to see it. And they're like, yeah, I definitely should have got that. Mm-hmm. He's, he's killing that right now. <laughs> So I was kicking myself for those and these green ones. I'm, I'm, I'm. I've been paying lately. I've been paying the the, the ultimate tax uh, up to Flight Club or um, the other uh, shoe place up there uh, in New York. Those are like the two places I, I've been going. But you know, yeah. the the they getting outrageous with the resale prices though. Oh uh, yeah, know? I can't, I can't, I can't do that resale stuff just because you know like how much it was originally and you probably <laughs> had a chance to get the shoe. It's like nah, those resale prices. That's that's not for me. Yeah. <laughs> I can't I can't pay over retail for a shoe at all. It just doesn't make sense for me. Yeah, the the Unless hype is something I really really want, but nah, nope. The hype ha- uh, is just too crazy. When the um the Air Max, the colorful Air Max ones that just came out, the 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 oh the uh, Sean Sean Witherspoon. Yeah, the Sean Witherspoon. Yo, the resale yeah. on those are ridiculous. Like they'll have a couple of them in the store, but. You know, it was like fourteen hundred, like fifteen hundred, like it's just crazy. Nah. It's crazy. Oh, and that, and you think about it, they were a hundred, what, sixty, sixty dollars. Yeah, yeah. Like that's ridiculous to see that that resale value. But again, it's it's what the market does. Like the people that are actually buying it, they're making that price. If, if people weren't buying it at that price, mm-hmm. it wouldn't be a resale market at all. But there's people out there that actually have that money that they can just throw away. Yeah. More power to them. I'm not doing that for a pair of sneakers. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. At all. Yeah, I mean, I've seen some places even talk about financing. You could do forty dollars a week for the Yeezys. Yeah. Like, it's crazy, right? <laughs> that's actually that's a great idea, but I don't think I can do that. <laughs> Thirty six months on the know. Yeezys. Uh, yeah. So, so, so here's a question: So if you talk about the Yeezys, how important are the Yeezys? How important are they? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like they were more important when he was with Nike, just because of the type of deal that it was. That was like the first of its kind. Yeah. Or, uh, for an actual uh, entertainer. Um, now, I mean, they're cool. Um, it's a little oversaturated because he's putting so many on the market now, and I'm really not a fan of, like, seeing stuff too much. Mm-hmm. But 
Um, I think it's just good, though. Like, it's just good to see that people are given that opportunity and it just gives other people hope that, look, he's a, he's a entertainer. He has a shoe deal. He has a, a clothing company. He has just the trophy wife in, in compared to, I guess you can say the media. I wouldn't say she's actually trophy wife, but um, yeah, it just, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just inspiration for people. I don't feel like the shoe is that important, but it, when he first signed up with Nike and it switched over to, to yeah. Adidas, it's, just, it's definitely inspiration for other people. So I'm not knocking it at all. Like God, I got the shoes. I, I like them. They're comfortable, but it's just a lot of them out right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like a go-to like, like you said, it used to be Nikes, but now it's almost like you got to have a pair of Yeezys if you want to be cool. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, and that's what it is. And that, yeah, a lot of people, they probably don't even like the shoe. They just want it because it's like the end thing now and they want to be cool. I'm totally against that. I, I just don't feel like that's the way to go. But like mm-hmm. for me, I just like the shoe at first. It's a very comfortable shoe. And he even made it. He made it for the purpose. Like he's a father now. He wanted a shoe that fits his lifestyle. So he's running around with kids all the time. He just wants to be relaxed. Mm-hmm. So I understand like the concept of the shoes that he's making. But other people, they don't even know the background history. They just buy the shoe and yeah. just because Kanye has his Kanye. Name on it, but. Yeah. That's true. That is really true, man. And I, I feel as and how much karma is that for Nike now to be releasing, or even all the shoe companies now to re- be releasing yeah. dad like look alike shoes? Yeah. Like that shit blew my mind. I was like, wow, yeah, it's, damn. It's a wave, man. It's, once, <laughs> once somebody starts to wave, it just follows up. Like, I, and I, I'm really not a fan of like the, the dad shoe look. I never was. Like, once I saw people wearing those Balenciagas, I was like, oh man, this is just this is just a cool thing again too. But I can't I can't do it. They're way too bulky. Yo, I see like, them in real life, jeans. and I, I was yeah. I couldn't believe how big they were. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're huge. Like I I can't even imagine driving with them. They look heavy. I never actually felt one in hand, but they look heavy. <laughs> I can't do that. Yeah, they big as hell. The only pair that I actually was like I might fuck with were the 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 pumas i don't know if you've seen the puma uh no dad those shoes. are nice because they're not too they're not too thick like the balenciaga they're they have a nice silhouette to them and i actually like the puma ones too like, yeah i was actually surprised when i saw those thunder spectra or something like that but don't the, shit the resale now is like 600 i'm like ah, oh, they got them i was like for damn puma? yeah for those the puma thunder spectras uh, oh, I was, crazy. I know, I was looking the other day because I was, I'm about to just get these and stun on them, and the they were sold out on the Puma website, and the resale was 600. I was like, damn. So that's that's why were they like limited or something? Because uh, oh, I guess I've actually only seen like three people wearing them on Instagram. Like they were influencers, of course. So, but I, I like the colorway though. The colorway is crazy. Yeah, the colorway is crazy. I, I think that they just didn't expect it to even, you know, be crazy like that. So they just put it out, you know. Yeah. So and it just ended up taking off. So that's yeah, crazy. That's, that's definitely a nice shoe. Though. I would mm-hmm. get that if if I knew when they released. I definitely would try to get it. <laughs> so what? So what's next for you? Like, what are some of your goals? Do you? I know you gonna keep pushing the website. Are you gonna get into more yeah. like, um, sort of? So what's next? Uh, for me, um, I guess for me, it's gonna be building out the website a lot more uh, because the the way like websites are going now, the format has changed up so much that it doesn't really work the same when it comes to like. Uh, just getting content and putting it out there. So I'm going to, uh, previously we used to do a lot of uh, YouTube content, like uh, red carpets and events and just interviews with artists. So I want to get back to that. There was just a slight transition when I moved out here where, I, of course, I couldn't bring the whole team with me. And it was hard to like actually have the same type of uh, uh, format of getting interviews done and just getting direct with these artists and stuff. So uh, the next goal for me is like to build a stronger team in LA, actually get into the, uh, get one-on-one with these artists again, promo runs and uh, just get that exclusive content out there. And even just giving a, a, a greater, uh, greater audience for even unsigned artists for people that feel like they're going to be next up that need it. I just want to get in with them first, have them, uh, get them, get them interviews and just get that content out, man. That's, that's the next goal for me. Yeah, that's dope. I know, um, do you, um, what about some event curating? Do you, uh, have you ever like done an event where people could come and perform? Um, so previously it was, uh, actually last September I had, um, what was called uh, the next verse. Hmm. Um, so that event, uh, that was based in LA as well. That was a, uh, pretty much a networking event for millennials that are pretty much in the entertainment industry, whether it's movies, uh, music, all of the above pretty much. Um, so did that event one time, I'm actually planning on doing it like quarterly, um, throughout the year. 
uh, but we definitely had some uh, some unsigned artists there as well. Uh, we were honoring actually somebody in the entertainment industry um, that was just on that growing path to success. Uh, so um, that's actually, thank you for reminding me about that, actually. That's something else that, that's in the works, just to have it out quarterly and keep consistent. It was like a big turnout for that. Everybody loved it. Uh, a lot of relationships were built during that process and people that actually showed up. So that's another thing. Uh, once it actually gets super built up in LA, then hopefully travel, go back to the East Coast, host it there, get some East Coast artists involved, and just build it on up. Yeah, that's dope, man. That, that's definitely good, and that's good to hear, and good to know that you know somebody from the East Coast is out there in LA holding it down and and shares the same uh, passion for music that we share over here on the East Coast. You know? Yeah, hundred uh, percent, man. It's like, and and that's the thing about it, like this. this it's not really a difference between the East and West Coast, but when you move from the East Coast, you kind of gravitate towards East Coast people that are over here too. So we just be grinding out together. Yeah. But when you actually meet the people on the West Coast, they they're cool too. Everybody's friendly. Um, you do meet some of the Hollywood people that you really don't know their intentions. But, <laughs> Shady um, Hollywood people. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's definitely a lot of people. Like sometimes when you just you're at a networking event, first thing, well, not even a networking event, you just be out in public, just minding your business and you'll come into contact with somebody and the first thing they ask is what do you do because of mm -hmm. course they're looking for an opportunity mm -hmm. um, sometimes oh. it's not a bad thing sometimes they can just be trying to help you out and get something from it as well but it's just weird when I get that what do you do yeah uh, I'm not here to talk about <laughs> yeah work right now you know what I mean yeah that is kind of weird yeah I definitely love LA um, and I definitely think, you know, I think New York used to be the place to go. But, you know, New York, I, m my conclusion on New York is it's so tight lipped on where the mm -hmm. stuff is at. Unless you there like on the blocks, you're not going to know about the different opportunities, uh, especially yeah. before Instagram. Like um, there was no there was no way to know what was going on in New York <laughs> besides being in the culture. But, Yo, yeah, I have I have the same the same thoughts as you right now like when i was on the east coast new york was very very tight lip you either had to know somebody in pr that was sending that information out um, or you just were not hearing about it you got to really be in the loop out there a lot like really for real so yeah i understand exactly what you're saying yeah and to me my my opinion on la was they were just more like all inclusive like come out have a drink yeah you can perform uh you want to be on tv yeah come out here get on the show like you know just hearing how you know, people from the East Coast that moved out there and was like, yo, I'm never coming back. Like, this is perfect. You know, like the the weather, the women and the weed and all that shit. They like, yo, we out there. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's real life. Like, I mean, you can get lost, but if you if you stay on the ground and you really like I, the thing about L.A. is there's stuff that goes on every single day. So as long as you're in that and you're, you're attending at least a few a week, you're going to you're going to get your start. Like, that's that's all it takes is just go to these events prior to prioritize i can't even say the word prioritize your time mm -hmm. and uh you, you'll definitely get your get your start somewhere but um yeah the, the culture out here is just very 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 dope outside of the the hollywood shenanigans and all that but and i, I love it man i can't see myself going back until i start a family see i knew that was gonna happen definitely. i knew it wasn't coming back <laughs> yeah I'm not, i can't see myself coming back man. well i mean if i did uh it would probably have to be like New York or DC, but yeah. I don't like to. I don't like New York too much, man. It's too, yeah. too congested, way too congested. Yeah, I um, I was living in Brooklyn, um, Atlantic and Lewis. Uh, yeah. I was out there for about two years for work, and um, definitely it, it takes some getting used to. But once I got it, I mean, it was a piece of cake. I, what I noticed about New York is the more time I spent, the smaller the city got. Like to me, my first day, I remember <laughs> being like this huge place and being like. I'll never be able to get to where I'm going. I what train? Yeah. The one, the two, the four, the A, and then like. Oh, I still don't know the train. <laughs> <laughs> ask me like uh, a year in, the city was like the size of a block. Like I can get anywhere in like 20 minutes. It was crazy, um, but <laughs> definitely interesting. Um, and LA too. Um, my first experience in LA, I was out there, and actually I started in San Diego, and I had the opportunity to drive from San Diego to san francisco and then back to san diego oh, and that's a long trip yeah, yeah i was i mean like for, it was my first first time out in la and i wanted to experience everything like for real for real and that's when i found out there's nothing between la and san francisco <laughs> it's just yeah, desert not, and gilliard yeah, it's, it's all desert yeah like you'll see a lot of uh agriculture and stuff but yeah there's nothing i was mad I as hell <laughs> 
that's a sightseeing trip right there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely nothing out there. I was like, oh shit. And then San Francisco was cold as hell when I got out there, and I yeah, I didn't have a yeah. jacket at all. And then the shit that <laughs> killed me about LA is that, um, it doesn't rain. So everybody I'm talking to, they like, yeah, it doesn't rain. It doesn't rain. I'm like, what do you? Everything's outside. I'm like, what do you mean it doesn't rain? They're like, yeah, it doesn't rain like that. That shit blew my mind. Yeah, that that changed since I've, I've been here like five years now. And my first couple of years, it didn't rain at all. And then finally, we start getting this rain. And when I tell you when it rains, nobody knows how to act. Like people with <laughs> actual LA natives, they get in accidents Damn. as soon as it rains. All traffic slows down even more. Like it's ridiculous, man. I'm just like I'm from the East Coast, so I'm used to. It. I'm trying yeah. to maneuver through everybody. Like they're like, "How's he doing this?" I'm like, "Yo, it's just a little bit of water. It's not even the East Coast rain." Yeah, but, it's like um, Atlanta when it snows, everybody just crashes up. That still wild to me that he goes in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, when I used to go to Atlanta, it used to be super hot when I was a kid. Like, I was, like, 13. I'm like, yo, it's way too hot out here. And to hear that it snows now, this world is getting wild. Yeah, that is like, true. Changes. It snowed one time when I was in college, and I remember all the people from Texas was outside, like, trying to build snowmen, and it was such a small amount. Yeah. Like, you know, in PA and yeah. Jersey, we get a lot. Like, it was literally, yeah. like, less than an inch. They trying to roll. <laughs> you know, they basically throwing water at each other. Like, it was nothing they could do with that. Water ice. <laughs> yeah, water ice. Shit was crazy. So, in L.A., also, um, I know cars. I know you love cars, man. So, how's how's the car scene out there? Man, I'd be jealous, man. <laughs> <laughs> But it, again, it's just motivation. Like, you, you, there's so many people out here that just have like crazy, crazy cars. Like, you'll just you'll you'll go to the grocery store. You'll see a Rolls Royce outside. You'll Damn. ride down on the highway. It's a Lamborghini. It's it's just it's like the basic car out here for somebody who's like a, a Benz or Audi. Like that's like the basic car that you'll see that everybody has. But then you'll you'll get those high class supercars and all that that's riding around that. With people with endless money. Yeah, the, but man, it's the just Fisker. Motivation. I'm like, yo, I got it. I, I got it. I love the Fisker, man. If I could, I know they just rebranded. Actually, I forget the name now, but um, yeah, the Fisker's crazy, man. And just because of the sun, it's solar powered. Mm -hmm. That's that's definitely a car that I want right there. That's a great vehicle. Yeah, when I went to LA, I was like, oh, so this is who buys all the Porsches and shit. It was mad Porsches <laughs> out there. I'm like, that's, damn. That's all you see. That's all you see, because there really wasn't a lot of Porsches on the East Coast. You'll see maybe one or two. Yeah. There's li literally like five million Porsches just everywhere. Every I'm like, damn, they riding Porsches out here. Uh, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, yeah, I'm trying to get my car where it is now. Um, I need to get my windows tinted. I got a BMW. I need to get my windows tinted, and um, yeah. I need to uh, add those some. I want. I don't want to get rims. I just want to get my calipers painted. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. What color is the car? Uh, it's black. Okay. Yeah, it's black. I mean, any color that you get is gonna stand out. So yeah. yeah. So I just want to get, and I and and I seen that a lot of people now get different color calibers, uh, but yeah. I just I'll stick with the black. I could get blue, but I just I'll just be I'll just be basic right now with the red. You know. <laughs> I but, mean, it looks it looks good when you drive, but like that's the main thing when you're driving. You see that that caliber through the wheel. That's yeah, nice I definitely sight. like that. <laughs> so um, and then somebody recently um, I was leaving the mall and I came out and there was a note on my car. And somebody was like, I'm sorry, I hit you. And I looked my whole fucking rear from my trunk to where my uh, wheel is on the left side, left uh, back door. Man, it was all scratched up. I was like, damn, oh, I'm so mad. But, you know, it left me the insurance number. And, um, oh, that's good. Yeah. That happened out here. That's, that's not happening. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got rear ended before, and this dude didn't even have insurance. So my insurance company is still trying to get it covered, but. Man, that was the worst feeling ever. Like everybody out here did. I would say like five and five out of seven people don't have insurance. Like, mm -hmm. That's real. Yeah. That is real. Yeah, that is real. And so, so, um, so um, as far as uh, the podcast, uh, I'll be in LA for BT weekend. I know um, okay. we got a. So I do two. Uh, what'd you say? So we got to link up. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We definitely got to do something, uh, do some video, uh, or if you're going to be anywhere, let me know. We'll definitely come through. So I do um, I do this podcast, and I do another podcast. The podcast is um, the Loomis Entertainment Show, and that's my okay. girlfriend, and she does 
Um, well, she does a lot of uh, different topics and I executive produced that and she actually got booked to do a little uh, panel. So we'll be okay. there uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and she's going to do the panel, I believe, on Saturday. It's a majority day on Saturday, but um, we trying to we got we we just applied for the press passes at the BT Experience and the BT yeah. Awards. So we'll see if those come through. But we'll be in that whole area, man. So we'll definitely come through. Uh, ch- definitely chop it up with you for a minute. Get some video. Get some drops. Do something for the gram and and uh, just connect. You know. Yeah, hundred percent. Is this, this your first BT uh, weekend? Uh, I, you know, I had went a couple years ago. Um, probably, I'd probably say 2011 when I okay. first went. That was a while ago. Um, and I, I just happened to be out there at the same time, and just randomly went to the experience and um, the concert. It was J Cole, Snoop Dogg, and Schoolboy. Schoolboy Q's another guy on my radar. I fucks with him a lot. Yeah. And uh, and and I just walked around. You know, that was it. I was by myself at that time, but um. Now we're coming back for actual business. And this is like the steps that happens like when you work hard. Like you go as just a, like a tourist, a spectator, and now you're back doing work at the event. Like that's yeah, how that's it should a, be. That's one of the best feelings. That's one of the best, <laughs> to see how far you came. Like you were a spectator at one point and now you're like involved with it. That's that's dope to me. Yes. I love doing that. Definitely. So it, it does pay off, man. So I mean the reason why I do the podcast is to talk to different people and get the story behind it because, you know, a lot of times people, they tend to leave out the information, right? Uh, they and, and these stories that people have are so motivational. It's always good to get it out and hear from people like you and definitely other people on their journey and how they got and just words of wisdom. So I definitely appreciate you for taking the time, calling in. Man, I'm honored, man. I'm honored. And we'll definitely uh, have you back on the show another time. And uh, maybe we can even collab on some music and stuff like that. 100%, man. Let me know. So just one time, let everybody know where they can find you at. Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Reese the Rail. That's R-H-Y-S-D-U-R-R-E-L-L. Uh, also, the produce section dot com uh, on Instagram. That's T H A. A S E C T I O N. That's the section, and um, yeah, man, that's that's pretty much it. That's where I'm. That's where I'm at. All right, man. Thank you, man. To all the listeners out there, you know where to find me at. Awesome underscore nobody. And until the next episode, peace. <laughs>